Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with a very special review from Fanboys Forever. Today we're going to be looking at the Target exclusive Masterverse New Adventures Skeletor figure. Now this is a really exciting release because this is a direct homage to that classic 1989 New Adventures Skeletor figure. Of course this is Skeletor in his first form, later on he would get some more gnarly armor. But so far, we've actually not seen that one translated into action figure form since the original. Instead, it's much more likely that you'll see this original version. And of course, uh, this is probably what Skeletor is much more remembered as looking like during that series and that toy line. I'm a big fan of New Adventures, so I'm really excited to share this one with you. So if you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button because that really does help the channel out. And be sure to comment on the end with your take on this brand new version of New Adventures Skeletor. With that out of the way, let's begin. Of course, we'll be looking at the packaging first. Uh, this is no big surprise these days. I think we're all more than aware of what to expect at this point with the Masterverse uh, blue up there and of course the figure displayed inside. The figure looks good here on the card and uh, at least this box does prominently display the figure. That's one thing good I will say about it. I do love that they have resurrected the original old He-Man toy line logo. Of course, you know, the original 80s toy line was called uh, Masters of the Universe, but then when they revitalized it for the New Adventures toy line, they just called it He-Man with this kind of interesting little logo in the background. They just refer to him as Skeletor, not New Adventures Skeletor. If you're looking for this figure, of course, this is the barcode right here. Keep in mind, he's only available at Target. We have some absolutely gorgeous artwork on the side, which thankfully with the new versions of this packaging, uh, later on, future characters, it'll be on the front. And on the back, we have an even more impressive uh, shot of Skeletor with Nordor in the background, which man, if we can only get a play set of that, right? Just a beautiful image with the rest of the figures from the most current wave. On the side, it just says Skeletor and they're still doing the weird barcode thing at the top of the packaging. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but I am definitely ready to get this guy out of the packaging. And here he is, that futuristic evil deviant, Skeletor. Like I said, I am a self-professed fan of all things New Adventures of He-Man because I just think it's a bold way to take the character. I know that it's not always, you know, the, the very best that they did with He-Man, and I know there's a lot of things about it that don't work very well. But for whatever reason, I just think the audacity of taking He-Man and making him like a Flash Gordon or Buck Rogers type of character, I just think that's insane. And it's so crazy that I kind of love it. So I can't be the only one that feels that way. And I'm so glad that Mattel was like, you know what, let's just keep showing more love to that era of storytelling. Because I would hesitate to say hated, but... Uh, it's pretty underappreciated, I think, in the world of Masters. So let's look at the sculpt. Uh, first of all, I think that this is such an incredible recreation of the paintings that we've seen from that era. Of course, especially I think in Europe and uh, England, uh, there was a lot of presence for new adventures in a magazine that they had, like a monthly He-Man or Masters magazine or whatever. It's a great wellspring of great paintings and artwork. And the reason I love those paintings from that era so much is because I think a lot of the time you can more or less see the designer's intentions rather than what they were limited by in terms of action figure production at that time. I think that especially impressive is how they got the bizarre shape of Skeletor's helmet correct. It's a very Giger-esque helmet, the guy who designed, you know, the aliens and things, the xenomorph. And it's very cool looking. I just, I think it's a very unique way to take the character and certainly a unique helmet design. And they've just done so much to make it as incredible looking as they could. I think it's kind of fascinating because if you look at the top of the helmet, you see a face right there, which it would be easy to assume that that's Skeletor, but it doesn't look like Skeletor to me. It more looks like Hordak, except I don't see the ears. So I don't know, I think that's interesting. I can't say for sure, but it definitely sort of looks like Hordak to me. But yeah, that's always been something that I've been a little perplexed by. And here, I think this design really takes it to another level. I just think it's cool looking. And then there's these kind of cavernous areas inside, like uh, beside the ears. 
and it's almost like he's wearing a bowl over a helmet and it's just it's completely original looking and i kind of love it of course we can't talk about the sculpt without taking the helmet off and this is the way that old bonehead comes packaged here and boneheaded he is but i particularly like all this weirdness and do you see that incredible transition between there's almost like a slime or a flesh around his head and then it transitions back to regular blue gar skin and it to me i i think it's fascinating because i don't know how to account for it i think that this is skeletor's green flesh that's under his blue gar skin and it's almost like his face has been burnt off and then there's this like layer of flesh that's just under the skin and then you can see the skin right here where it's like peeling back and then it's not so burnt back here and then there's a life support system almost keeping everything together and it's funny because i guess really when you think about it because you know you instantly want to look at that and be like well that doesn't really jive with skeletor because we know that you know under the hood he's just got you know the back of the skull or whatever but i do implore you to just think about the toys for a second and in the toy world i mean this is all you could see of skeletor sure in the cartoons and things and in the 87 film you could see more you know and realize that he just had a regular skull back there but the truth is this hood kept you from really knowing what was back there and um, <clears throat> i don't know this is almost like a suggestion that there was some flesh or something but you also have to remember that in the vintage mini comics for new adventures and yes they had mini comics that uh, i believe the reason skeletor even looks like this is because he stows away on the starship with he-man and when he realizes prince adam is he-man he tries to kill him and then in transforming burns skeletor's flesh up and then he has to put on all this life support stuff i've always loved that personally i've always hated that in like the um the jet lag cartoon skeletor just shows up and he just looks different I just, I just don't like it. I feel like there should be an explanation for that drastic of a change. I'm cool as long as there's an explanation. I also didn't like that he had googly eyes. Gosh, give me the red eyes any day, and they would have been a lot easier to animate, too. Not only that, but he also has his life support armor and vest right here. Love the silver skulls. Love the uh, kind of... There's almost like a shininess to the gears and things on the front, and then there's more of a base purple or burgundy behind it. And I really like that you can see the tubes that were always present in the original design that are, I guess, supposed to be keeping him alive. It's very Darth Vader-esque. Down here, we can see Skeletor's face. And then right here, he has kind of the um, metallic armored underwear, I guess. And on the back, I really like all of the extra detail and sculpting that they did back here to make it more like a suit of armor. And check out all of this. It's such a shame that it's not painted silver and everything. I know you'll never hardly see it behind the cape. This is some of their best sculpting they've ever done. And look, it leads up directly to the little life support mechanism up here. And I just think it's incredible looking. So this is really an unsung part of the figure. It's the kind of thing that I almost want to get an extra just so I can go in and detail it with a chromium pen. Not only that, but Skeletor's legs have plenty of detailing, but they do a weird thing here. You can see that they didn't do any paint app on the upper part of the hips before the swivel and here they did a wash so it looks really weird they really needed to do that wash up here to make it match and i think that's my number one visual gripe with the figure uh, either that or this should have been a lot more subtle so i wish it had been up there it would look great see you can kind of imagine what the shading would look like consistently but instead you have these really bright baby blue kind of tops of the hips on the side, you can see that there's a little bit of some paint slop right there. I guess it come off from this area. Uh, I can take care of that with a little acetone, of course. And you can see that he just has kind of armor or whatever. And then you can see the cords, which aren't painted silver. I wish they were. Instead of this wash, this strange wash, I wish that there was just silver right there. And then he has the really cool boots. And uh, you can't say that the design isn't cool. I mean, maybe you can say it's inappropriate for Skeletor or it doesn't work for Masters. I think those are all valid arguments. But I'm not sure it's a valid argument to say that this design, and this is just totally subjective, so yes, it is valid if you don't like it. But I just think it's a cool design. I mean, truly. Putting his helmet back on, let's give him back his dignity. 
I like how in the official art you can see the kind of burns peeking out from beneath the helmet so I never feel like I need to do it like this. You could if you wanted to, but I like it up there to where you can actually see that extra little detail. Of course his gloves are really nothing to write home about, but you know, they're there. And I love Skeletor's staff. Me personally, my favorite staff that Skeletor uses, there's even a blade down here, and all of Master's Dumb, if that's even a term, is the New Adventure staff. I like it more than the Havoc staff. Yes, yes, sue me. Unsubscribe, do whatever you gotta do. No, <laughs> see, see, don't! But I really love this thing, and there was even a roleplay item made of this back in the day, and I would really like that. Believe it or not, I actually had growing up, even though I didn't really have a lot of He-Man toys, I did have the roleplay New Adventures sword, and to me that was just the power sword. Seriously, the yellow one that lit up and made noises. I loved it, I played with it all the time. Mom found it at like the uh, trade store. But this is just such a cool piece. And overall, I mean, there's really just one more element of the figure we haven't discussed, and that's this cape. And this is probably one of the more controversial elements. I think the fabric is fine. As a matter of fact, that's pretty accurate, you know, to the original figure and the original design. But what isn't so great is their weird solution that I guess they felt they had to come up with to keep the cape on. And that's this weird little mini hula hoop that goes right around his neck. I wish that they had come up with something a little more dignified or uh, maybe even painted this blue because it sticks out so strangely up here. And uh, I guess, you know, and this isn't fabric. I need you to understand that. This is a plastic ring. And so that kind of threw me for a loop. Um, I'll show you that, yes, you can easily pop the head off just like all these figures. And you can take the cape off if it bothers you, but I really like for Skeletor to have his uh, New Adventures cape. So technically, you could just remove this weird plastic ring and just leave this fabric here and kind of set it here. And in this crevice down below the uh, neck peg, you could do, then just put the head on and it would probably just smush it down in there and it would keep in fine. I think that probably would have been the best solution. But what I'm really tempted to do, and I, I hate to alter the figure, but what I'm really tempted to do is probably just take this ring out and then just add like a tiny little piece of thread or something like in a loop right here. And then just have it uh, discreetly go around the ball peg on the neck there and then it'll just stay right on i think that would be a fine solution but you know what i'm okay with it it's fine it's still weird though i think that there was a more elegant solution and that they missed a trick there i really do in terms of accessories beyond the helmet and the staff itself you do have two uh fisted hands right here so you definitely can use those if you want but overall, I, I think he really looks great. He turned out terrific, honestly, and the little loop around the cape is not a big deal. All right, friends, let's go ahead and just look at articulation briefly. Head can go up and down and all around. At the shoulders, you can get just at 90. There is a swivel at the shoulder. There is a really nice double-jointed elbow that you can do a lot with. There's hinges on the hands, and depending on what type of hand, it determines what direction the hinge is going in. The arm can go all the way around. There's a really nice split right here that is covered very well by the chest plate and it gets all sorts of great motion with plenty of forward and plenty of back. You even get a waist swivel that turns at the belt right there, that sculpting. You can get some pretty nice splits, all things considered. You can do an okay kick. Uh, it doesn't quite get to 90 or anything like that, but that's due to the sculpting there on the underwear. You can also see that we have a swivel. There is a double jointed knee, which is very effective. There is a boot rotation and there are hinges down here at the ankles and hinges forward and back, of course. And they seem very, very flexible. And it's all because of the way they sculpted the boot there. And you can see it's like a giant slope. So the foot can go way back and way forward. And thanks to that, you can flat foot all kinds of great poses. Now I'm cheating a little because this is the Marvel Legends Hulk stand here and it does have a peg so I might as well peg the foot in while I'm at it just to see if that works. Yep, it works really well. Uh, it appears to be the same size of a peg, I guess, if that information helps you. And as you can see, that ankle rocker pivot does plenty of the heavy lifting even for a more extreme pose like this where one foot is elevated and one foot is on the ground. There's certainly plenty to like when it comes to that articulation. And as you can see, uh, he's certainly able to flat foot those more difficult poses. All right, so definitely we want to do a big comparison that I think will be really thrilling for me to see. And that's to put that new Adventures He-Man that was also a target thing 
God bless Target, because if it wasn't for them guys, I have a feeling that we probably wouldn't be getting a whole lot of this Masters stuff. I think Target has really been a great partner to Mattel, not just for Masters, but for Jurassic Park fans as well. If it wasn't for Target, don't think that it would be as active as it is. Target specifically has really invested in Masterverse, and they really believe in it, so God bless them. And here they are in the post-apocalyptic wasteland that I created for them to inhabit. Yes, it's New Adventures He-Man and Skeletor together as they should be. They're a fantastic match to each other. They look great. You can tell that they were conceived by the same group of people who had the same ideas about what kind of style to take these figures in. They scale perfectly together. Um, I couldn't ask for a better set, really, than just seeing these guys together just like this. And it's just a beautiful thing. And if you're a big Masters fan like me, especially big New Adventures fans, this is such a great thing to see. And I'm thankful for it, truly. I'm thankful for it. Uh, when I got those New Adventures Classics figures, I thought, well, that'll be, you know, the last iterations that these versions ever see. I'm so happy to be wrong. Speaking of those guys, here's their second cousins once removed, New Adventures Skeletor from Classics. And I'll have to move some of this. Sorry, post-apocalypse. And He-Man. You know, it's kind of funny to see that the Classics figures look a little small compared to these guys. Isn't it a little weird? Just a little bit. And you're going to see what I see. And that's that the Horsemen went to Flavortown on the details. They went crazy taking New Adventure Skeletor and turning him into just the most detailed, gnarly looking version of the character. And same with He-Man in a lot of ways, even though Skeletor I think is more impressive. I know a lot of people always thought that he had like a fat chest piece or something. I don't really know what that's about. I never really thought that. I just thought he was like bulked up. But that was a limitation of that line. Here's the thing though. These two guys are fantastic and probably the more detailed versions with and much better paint applications for both of them. I think that's obvious because that was a made for order collector's line. But I will say that these two are much better representations of the original figures, the actual old toys. And yes, I think that counts for something. You can tell that the designers, the sculptors were aiming for different things. The horsemen definitely weren't aiming to just be complete replicas of those original figures. Whereas, you know, your new designers with Masterverse, they were aiming for those original figures as just modern updates of them that are bigger and have a little more detail and that they're much more articulated. So it's different. It's just different. I, I wouldn't even venture to look at one and be like, oh, this is definitely, you know, the superior or whatever. The flavors are just completely their own thing. Here's He-Man wearing the space helmet without the rest of the armor. And thanks to the magic of editing, his armor on with the Skeletor. And honestly, I probably think this is the way they're supposed to be displayed together because, I, you know, I believe that this was just like Skeletor's helmet and chest armor. I think that, you know, this is kind of what they intended for this He-Man to be like battle ready. So I think if they're going to face off with each other, this is probably the look that they were intending. If you don't feel like waiting on Target to get their slush head out, which should be any time now, I think there's already some package samples out there. Here is the classic slush head, but he's a little bit smaller than Skeletor. It's still so weird to me that Classics looks little <laughs> compared to these guys. I don't know if they'll ever get out of Flog, who was leader of the Space Mutants. Uh, alongside Skeletor, I guess, or Skeletor is trying to undermine him or something. But here's old Flog right here, just having a good old time in retirement. And they don't look so bad together. Flog's a little tall, actually. Optic. I always really liked Optic. I thought he was a super fun figure. And they look good together. Here's Karate. Uh, I just figured out a little while back that you can take the Masterverse Whiplash loincloth that's removable and put on him, and it's really cool looking. I mean, like, it, it actually goes with it. The purples are the same, so that's something cool you can do. And Mother of Skeletine, presumably. <laughs> no, that's evil one. <laughs> but no, this is uh, Skeletor Space Girlfriend, so there you go. Here's a fun comparison and one that I've been looking forward to. The uh, highly sought after, only available in that SDCC 2-pack of 40th Anniversary uh, figures is the 40th anniversary Skeletor. Man, I really would have thought that they would have released this guy by now, but it's really fun to see them together. Hard to believe he's not out in any other form. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, you're laughing. Because <laughs> he should be out for everybody. I mean, really. 
Here's new Eternia Skeletor. He's new. You know what? He's just bigger than all these other figures. You guys getting that? It's just strange. Here's Skeletor from Revelation. Again, you can see the sort of, in my opinion anyway, the obvious uh, height difference. Definitely very large in terms of uh, in terms of the scale. You can see he's hunkered down a little too. But here's a figure he won't outscale. Revelation Masterverse Skeleton. And just so you can see, here's an Origins figure beside of him, the 2000X Skeletor. And in case you're wondering, yes, parts are modular with Origins. And uh, you can get some that's, you know, kind of weird. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not, it's not too horribly far off, I think, from what you would expect it to be. And uh, just so you can see, yes, you can get your jet lag He-Man in there and the TV box set from that. They look all right together. And here's a fairly apt comparison as these two iterations of Skeletor aren't that far apart. You can see we have the Masterverse movie Skeletor, or as I like to call him, Langelator. And here is my Lundgren He-Man from Masterverse in case you want him to go up against Space Skeletor. But don't be fooled, he is wearing the Ramen Toys Dolph Lundgren He-Man head, which makes a world of difference. And here's He-Man when he's done playing. You tried to go to space to get away from me, you schmuck. Ah! And even though I don't own the original 1989 Skeletor from the New Adventures line, we can certainly put a picture up on screen so you can see just what a cool remake and faithful remake that this really is. So honestly, this is one of those figures that I just really thought that we wouldn't get. Uh, I saw Masterverse as being kind of a finite thing, and it may still be, you never know. It's had a great run, of course, no matter what. And I thought, you know, they'll never get around to something like a New Adventures or something like that. But I'm so happy to be wrong, and they have indeed gotten to Skeletor. Even if they don't get around to doing any more of the Galactic Guardians, of course we know that they are going to get around to doing Slushhead at the very least. It's still so great that we were able to get these guys to see them be such faithful recreations of their original vintage counterparts it's a really nice feeling particularly i think that skeletor probably turned out somewhat better than he-man did actually so i have to really hand it to them for going the extra mile to really have a satisfying and um, just a fantastic sculpt matter of fact i would even go so far as to say that this skeletor is definitely in the top echelon for me uh, when it comes to Masterverse releases. I just think that it's probably one of the most faithful recreations they ever did in Masterverse of one of the old vintage figures. It definitely gives a character his due that's not been done to death or a version of a character that's not been done to death. And it really can't be underestimated how cool it is to see New Adventure Skeletor back in top form like this. I mean, if I could have had anything else, I suppose, even though I'm not a huge fan of the design, I, it would have been maybe neat to have seen a jet lag head where he does have the big uh, eyeballs with the tiny little pupils and the weird teeth. I mean, that would have been fun, but I'm so much happier with the standard head here. And uh, I think it just turned out terrifically. If you are interested in this guy, just keep in mind that at least in the United States, I know that Skeletor is a Target exclusive. And uh, again, if it wasn't for Target, I really don't think Masterverse would be half as robust as it is. And their continuing patronage of the line really does mean a lot. So I can't wait to see how Slushhead turns out, especially to uh, have a companion to go with the Skeletor. If you could think of one of the Galactic Guardians that you would want with He-Man, I wonder who it would be. I think Hydron and Flipshot, of course, are kind of the standard choices. But I just wonder what else that we would probably need to see with those guys. Probably best to do them in a multi-pack of some sort. Either way, I do foresee this guy becoming a real centerpiece of my shelf. And uh, definitely one of my favorite Skeletor figures that they've done in ages. Well, friends, I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this review. I've had a great time presenting the figure to you. And I, of course, wish you luck as you go out for this guy. Um, I ordered mine off of the Target website and uh, did store pickup so that I could grab him. But he did stay in stock for a little while there. I'm sure by the time that you're watching this video or later on that uh, he'll probably be available again. 
And if not, I can only wish you luck in the secondary market. And of course, be sure to subscribe. I do new Masters videos all the time and uh, have a really big review coming out pretty soon. Don't forget to like the video because that really does help us out and it makes the algorithm do its thing. And of course, be sure to comment down below, letting me know what you think of this brand new version of New Adventure Skeletor. And with all that being said, God bless you and yours. And I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. You tried to go to space to get away from me, you schmuck. Ah!